The Blue Rose Manuscript, by Francis Rosenfeld. Forward. Beloved, I don't know when these teachings will reach you, but reach you they will, in their good time. Such are the rules of this round world. One thing I know, I'll be long gone, and many centuries will pass before you are born. You, my star, my destiny, my wonder. I have so many things to teach you and wish I could be there with you. But it doesn't really matter. We're all immortal, our kind. We never leave. We never die. We stay behind the ebbs and flows of the world to keep watch, to guide and to listen. I was born before the rise of the cathedrals, before the monuments of Egypt, before the age of reason. I was born many times in many forms. Although I'm sentimental and often return to a variation of my current one, and I will be born again some day, many centuries from now, as you. It is to you that I write this letter, my guidance for your life, filled with undying love and all the wisdom I accumulated over my many lives of learning. Don't be afraid, my sweet, my precious jewel. There is nothing to be afraid of in this world. Don't you know that it is your playground, your laboratory? Everything around you is for you. The world is for you to fashion and enjoy. You don't believe me. Where should I start? This lifetime is as good a start as any. I was born with hands blessed by the angels with the gift to bring forth beauty. These hands of mine birthed many things into this world. Spiritual children of sorts, works of art, books of poetry, knowledge of science and strength of building. If there is a wish every parent holds dear is for their children to thrive and be around for many generations, and I was so blessed in my spiritual children, the fates have smiled upon me. I see they are still around after all this time so you can meet them too. You may wonder how I get to know all this, since I died a long time ago. You see, one of the lessons I have yet to teach you is the variable nature of time. The cycle of my life, of this life, is about to end and before I embark on a new journey, in a new form. I wanted to make sure the revelations of this life would not get lost on my many future selves. Few people get to experience meeting themselves through time, and fewer still are fated to love that future self with such elation, with such self-abandon as I have you. I have to believe that there are no accidents in this world, that things happen for a reason, and that this soul of mine, with all of its passion and daring, got to see its reflection in you, defying centuries, one heart beating in two bodies. I know you don't remember me now. You haven't even met me yet. And when you do, I will be an old man, like the man I am now. You would have already read these writings by then, and you'll see me as a teacher. But whenever I tell you the truth, you won't believe it. And that is my curse. Maybe you will find it easier to accept if it comes in your own handwriting. Five hundred years old by the time you discover it, and maybe having to read it in a locked archive room and touch it with gloved fingers will make it feel more valuable to you and more worthy of your trust. But it is the same me, my love. It's always the same me. I'm not at ease talking about such things, but they were things that needed to be said before we start. Devotedly yours. And here the manuscript ends, with an indecipherable sigil, a signature of sorts, that seems to have been subjected to moisture. The water stain damaged almost its entire surface, making it impossible to recover, and the wax seal on the other side of the paper, placed in the same spot, prevented the preservation specialists from retrieving any other information. The seal is a rose, a rather common symbol for the time when the manuscript originated, and has no characteristic features that would allow us to identify its owner. The manuscript was deemed apocryphal, however we placed its origin somewhere around the beginning of the 16th century.